Welcome back. We're obviously not in my garage. Starting this one off in my car. You see, UPS, they seem to have lost my package with the metering rods. Last time they saw it was on Thursday. This is Monday. This has led to the pretty insane decision to fly down to the south of Sweden to a company that had a small collection of uh, suitable metering rods in stock pick up said metering rods and then fly back tomorrow morning. <laughs> Here's the old and up until today only rod in my possession and here are the three new ones. I'll bring you in closer, there's one in particular that looks uh, interesting. This is the old one, it's a 2-3. The first number is how rich it is at high throttle openings and the second number is how rich it is at low throttle openings. As you can see this is fairly lean at high throttle openings and richer at lower throttle openings. This new one is quite a bit richer at high throttle openings and also quite a bit richer at low throttle openings. And this new one, an 8-3, is much richer at high throttle openings. The same at low throttle openings. Then there's this one. This is an A6. It's an alcohol needle. And you can see there's uh, an obvious difference there. It's uh, scooped out. This will deliver much more fuel than these. The other rods I ordered are not lost anymore. UPS managed to find them. Estimated to be here next Monday, almost a week. If I knew this yesterday, that would not have changed my decision to fly down and pick these up. Still would mean no progress this week. Those rods will bridge the gaps between these rods. Will still be a huge gap between the richest of the gas rods and up to this uh, alcohol rod. I have a feeling this will work though. And the safest approach is to start with the richest rod. So that's what we'll do. Completely custom built, supercharged 50cc two-stroke, by the way, if you're new here. I don't have time for heating up the coolant and uh, starting this now, but first thing tomorrow morning. It's the next day, my coolant is soon up to temperature. Before we can start testing, there's a couple of little uh, flight checks we need to perform. Now that it's been sitting for a little while. I've already dumped out the gas I used for purging. And now we're gonna fill it back up with the methanol and nitromethane, RC fuel. I'm actually in dialogue with the Norwegian government. See if I can get a license so that I can uh, buy some uh, pure nitromethane and uh, mix my own fuel. The regulations are really strict in Norway. I think I've got a rule book on my side though. There's nothing there stating that uh, two-stroke stuffing enterprises shouldn't be allowed to handle nitromethane. It is necessary in my production. Water is up to temp. You're probably wondering why I'm standing in such an awkward way trying to remove the plug from my engine. Well, you see, kneeling for anything, it's beneath me now. I'm a lord. You can become a lord and have stuff being beneath you too, thanks to established titles. Established titles is a fun and novel way to preserve the woodlands of Scotland while helping global reforestation efforts. Based on a historic Scottish custom where landowners are referred to as lairds or lords or lady, in English. Title packs give you at least one square foot of dedicated land with an unique plot number on a private estate in Edelston, Scotland and an official certificate with a crest. Established titles plant a tree with every order and supports global charities, one tree planted and trees for future. You could officially include the title Lord or Lady on your plane tickets, credit card 
etc. First 200 people purchasing a title through my link will effectively be next to my plot. Within walking distance. Our own two-stroke stuffing kingdom. Makes an amazing last minute gift. Established titles is actually running a massive Black Friday sale now. And you'll get an additional 10% off if you use the code two-stroke stuffing. Go to establishedtitles.com slash two-stroke stuffing to collect your gifts now and help support the channel. Thank you, established titles. Combined spark and drain plug. My dyno area is turning into a graveyard for these uh, small centipedes. They seem to be really attracted to the oil or something. And, uh, it's obviously not healthy for them. This was only today's catch. And just from this little area. First test with that alcohol metering rod. The retarder is not hooked up. It only has to spin up the inertia of this assembly, not the retarder itself. Let's see how it behaves. Switching to that super rich alcohol metering rod was an immediate success. I'm more confident we're not too lean now. The thing with methanol and nitromethane is you can run it. There's a point where it becomes rich enough and it runs fine. And then you can just richen up the mixture. And it doesn't really make much of a difference. Like just a small difference. If you go just slightly on the lean side, we start melting plugs or worse. Let's hook the retarder up to give it some more inertia to play with. And uh, then hook up power and start applying some load. I noticed a leak here though and people commented on seeing fuel around this area in the previous video and I saw that too. I thought maybe it was one of my hoses not properly connected but uh, I actually think it's that uh, nitrous port which I'm not using. I thought that got blocked by epoxy but probably not and it sits like inside the tuber but it's not clamped by the tube. So we'll have to pull this off and uh, have a look. I need to get a better clamp here. This one is... Uh, I can't tighten it fully, it starts skipping. It's not a good clamp for this application. I can't position the camera under there, but you can see that port in the mirror here. I thought I clogged that up with epoxy, but obviously not. We'll have to blank it off. I lucked out and found this little set screw, which is short enough and the same thread. I'll use this and some Teflon tape and uh, we should be good. We've hopefully fixed that leak. The retarder is hooked up. We'll see how it behaves with the inertia of that big hunking chunk of steel. Not hooked up to power yet.
seems to have no problem pulling that retarder along. We have a massive case of a sticking slide though. Not surprising. I'm gonna see if I can find a stiffer return spring. I also think I need to connect the top of the slide here to the float bowl to equalize the pressure between the two. Both these things have been on my mind, but uh, you know how I am. I wanted to see how it worked, how it behaved without doing those modifications first. I actually think we reached a point where it's getting too rich at high throttle openings. Which is great, we can start closing down some power jets. We know we can give it enough fuel. And now we can start giving it less. Probably. I haven't got any stronger springs of the correct size, nor a spring steel to create one. I want to see if that pressure equalizer circuit helps first. That's originally the float bowl overflow. Now it's hooked up to the top of the slide. Pressure in here should be equalized with pressure in here. And the pressure in here is taken from that pitot tube on the other side, here. I think the cable was stuck here, maybe. Or I made it worse. We'll see. Some pretty awesome compressor flutter going on there. The slide is still sticking quite a bit. It's taken a long time to return from full throttle, which is a problem. My blow-off valve is not doing anything, and I think that's because the slide is returning so slowly. No real pressure difference between the crankcase where that blow-off valve is taking pressure from, and the intake where it's supposed to release pressure. I think the sticking slide is the problem. It doesn't slam shut, it slowly closes. Sounds really cool though. Still a leak on the other side of the carb. I need to put a camera there and see what's going on. Fairly successful so far though, don't you think? It's starting to sound and run like a normal engine. This one's a little bit shorter because I had to fly down and pick up those rods and stuff, you know. So, see you next time. As I can't find springs long enough of the correct size but stiffer, nor can I find spring steel of the correct dimension. No spring steel at all in fact, without ordering. I've added two of these, one over the original spring and one under. Still room when the slide is fully retracted. Should be a lot more spring tension, could help. We'll see. I'm also setting up a second camera, monitoring the carb from the other side to see if we can uh, pinpoint where that leak is coming from. I've felt a lot of progress in my recent video, but I'm not sure it's conveyed properly 
through the videos out to you. We started with a roots blower. The pulses in the roots blower seem to be interfering with the pulses of the two-stroke engine. And it's a tiny 50cc engine. I couldn't find a smaller blower and run it one-to-one. -one. Switched it out for a Rotrex centrifugal unit. No pulses. Led to no pumping action at low RPM. Fixed that with a sliding reed valve. <laughs> Thumbs up for keeping things straight. Keep a mental note of this. But wait. <sighs> Made custom sleeve carb electron. Brought it down from 48 to about 32 millimeters with an oval sleeve, rectangular sleeve. Left a step in there. Wanted to see how it behaved. Dumb idea. Removed step. Ran much better. Not enough fuel. Ran fine on gas. Not on methanol and nitromethane. Alcohol needles. Metering rods. That's where we are now. There's been a lot of troubleshooting, fixing problems, progress. I'm not quite sure if it's uh, properly conveyed. As soon as I replace this purging gas with alcohol again, we'll see if the carb still sticks. And that other camera might shine some light on where that leak, that carb leak is coming from. It's running great actually. The slide is still sticking though. It's getting too much fuel at higher throttle openings. I can see when fuel starts traveling up that highest power jet tube, then it dies. So we're actually at the point where it's getting too much fuel now, which is great. It's easy to crank it down some. That's what we'll try now. I watched the footage from the other camera on the camera screen though, but I couldn't really see a leak. I'll have to watch it on the computer later, but uh, seems to be fine. We really need to fix that stick and slide issue with a much stiffer spring, push-pull arrangement and maybe even bearings for the slide, something before we continue testing. Just one more test. I'll try closing off those two extra power jets I added in. Now with that alcohol needle, they might not be needed yet. We'll see how it behaves with, uh, with those closed. Slightly better with a little less fuel. The slide is sticking even worse though. Seems like the better the engine is running, the worse the slide is sticking. Really can't continue testing without fixing that issue. Not only because I can't let off the gas properly, also because the blow-off valve doesn't work with the slide half open. There's no real pressure difference between the case and the intake. Lots of flutter from the compressor. Sounds cool, I don't think it's uh, healthy for it. Exciting times. Next time.